Montgomery just to whisper something to the uh, Community Development, Housing, General Government Committee to order. Uh, since we have such a big crowd, we will uh, uh, try to speed through all this. If, uh, uh, for one thing, we do not have anything on the consent agenda except our minutes. Could we dispense Move for that? approval. <laughs> Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you. <coughs> we have two items that are in um, your hands. Yeah. The first one, if you'd like to read that. Item G1, discussion of legislation for the 2015 session of the North Carolina General Assembly. You should have in front of you a revised um, 2015 legislative package it's just for discussion today um, if you would turn your attention to the second page which is the uh, master resolution and you may recall from this last session that the General Assembly uh, was tied up with reform legislation tax legislation and the budget so a number of local acts were not dealt with during this past session and uh, our delegation members indicated that we should basically resubmit uh, for the 2015 session of the local acts from last year or this past session, mm -hmm. which were basically held in committee. So on the resolution, the first three local acts, or the first three acts, are basically from the 2014 package. First, dealing with parking meters and being able to feed the meters with not just tokens and coins, but basically cash, debit, and credit cards. I see a typo, that should be cards. And then the second one is to allow for remote participation in um, council meetings and other public meetings. Uh, again, this was included in your package last year. And the third one is to allow for the service of chronic violator notices by regular mail and posting, which again was included in last year's package, and I think the package before uh, last year as well. The fourth one is new, um, basically with some legislation that was recently enacted there will be a sales tax imposed on our tickets to the fair starting in 2015 and it is believed that this tax will amount to ninety thousand dollars and i believe the um fair director estimated that this would increase the uh, admissions ticket by one dollar so this legislation would exempt the um, dixie classic fair from that sales tax so that's um the new Act, so to speak, that's included in your package. Everything else is pretty much in terms of acts from last year. Okay, and this said statewide legislation? Yeah, because there are other communities that have fairs, so I figured they would want to piggyback on that. And you may recall during the last session, there was actually a bill that would have allowed that, and there were about six or seven other communities that were uh, in favor of that bill, but again, it got put on the back burner given the other things that were going on. So this yeah. would be all the, in effect, uh, taking away that act. Basically <laughs> repealing, as it relates to agricultural fairs, the sales tax. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then, you want to talk about the acts before I go to the resolution? Does that matter? Any more questions? Okay. And then you also have in your package uh, a couple of resolutions. Uh, you may recall with the um, omnibus tax bill last year, or that passed actually earlier this year, that bill contained a provision that repealed the privilege license tax effective July 1st, 2015. And as part of the uh, signing of that bill, the governor, along with um, the chair of the finance committee uh, on the House side as well as the Senate side, 
committed to trying to find replacement revenues for the privilege license tax. So this resolution basically encourages the General Assembly to find replacement revenues for the privilege license tax, which for us is about $3 million in terms of lost revenue. And then the next one deals with the historic preservation tax credit, basically, again, encouraging the General Assembly to restore the historic tax credit. And the um, draft resolution speaks to restoring it through December 31st, 2020. Is everybody following? No, I've lost you Okay, now. I'm sorry. If you will go, you have resolution okay. on top, then you have the um, parking meter bill, yeah. you have the remote access or participation bill, which is a couple of pages long, mm -hmm. then you have the chronic violator bill, then you have the bill relating to the entertainment tax, and then behind that is the resolution that deals with the privilege license tax. Yeah, okay, I'm caught. Is everybody with me now? Okay, so this resol the resolution on the tax credits is to restore it to its previous form. Right. If you're on the um, historic pre uh, preservation tax credits, that's the restore the tax credits that basically were allowed to expire. Right, but in this, we're asking them to, to be restored to the way they were before. Exactly, the exactly, okay. with, with an expiration period of December 31st, 2020. Okay. So that's on the historic tax credit. Did anybody have any questions on the privilege license tax? We're okay on that. Historic tax credit. Everybody following me now? Okay, now the film tax credit. And you may recall that basically that was allowed to expire and they put in place, the General Assembly put in place of the tax credits, this um, $10 million grant program. And based upon a, a review of that program by individuals in the, I guess, film industry, and our, some of our local folks, it appears that that grant program may not be as beneficial as the film tax credit. If you look at the um, resolution um, that's in your package, if you look at the bottom of the first page of that resolution, there are some requirements. In particular, you have to have $5 million minimum investment for feature films, 250000 for a television series, and commercials with a $5 million per project cap for all productions. Um, and based upon those requirements, it is believed that the, those requirements will make that grant program less beneficial than the 25% refundable tax credit that was in place. So what this resolution does is to ask the General Assembly to restore the film tax credit at least through December 31st, 2020, and to study whether or not this grant program or some other program might be more beneficial during that time period to, to basically study that, those different options and select the best one. Okay, so the, 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 ten, the grant program requires these minimums. Right. Yeah, it's capped at $10 million, so essentially about you stuff on that. Hmm. Right. Okay. And I think the mayor's, Metropolitan Mayor's Coalition looked at it and determined it was not as beneficial as the film tax credit, and our local folks looked at it and made that determination as well. So. Okay. Are there any other questions about any of this? Uh, I don't have a question about these specifically, more of a process thing since I'm the freshman here. Is this our only opportunity this year to, to go to the state with things that we want? Usually what, we, what we'll what we do, this is just for discussion this time and then it'll be for um, vote by the full council or coming through committees in December and full council in December. And then we'll have a meeting with our delegation in January before the session actually starts. And then we'll get our delegation members to basically introduce the uh, legislation that we council adopts. And throughout that whole process, as um, ideas for legislation come up, if council members you know, vote to add to the legislative package, certainly we'll do that during the course of the year as well. 
So this is sort of like the beginning stages. It's yeah. not the only opportunity, right. it's the beginning stages. And as things happen in the General Assembly, you all may remember my late night emails about this going on and this is what I feel like we need to do with respect to this bill, it's good or bad and so forth. So. Thank you. I was going to suggest a, a little change to the wording of the resolution itself. Uh, and it's basically um, in the last couple of lines um, where staff's authorized to work with the mayor's coalition mm -hmm. and, the, and the league okay. um, on their duly adopted advocacy agendas. I'd, I'd clarify that a little bit um, where it says provided, I'd say to the extent that the issues and goals identified therein are consistent with the interests and policies of the city. Okay. I, I, the master resolution, the first, one. Okay. yeah. Um, right behind the memo. I, I think that's probably understood the way it it's is. written, but I just I wanted to, to make it a little I more. I certainly important. understand why. And yeah, <laughs> yeah you got my email. I that. did. <laughs> and there, so. from time to time, there have been other issues that our, our positions were frankly a little more progressive than um, the league's voting majority. I understand. So that's just an overview of the package. Again, it's just for discussion. And if you all have any suggestions um, for items to include for December committees, let me know. I mean, I sent out the memo to council members, department heads, and um, other individuals, I guess it was back in September, soliciting ideas, and I actually only received one. So if you all can think of some additional things to include in the package, just let me know. Try to let me know as soon as possible so I can put it together for December committees. Okay. Questions? Yep. Ideas? Okay. <laughs> we'll wrap our brains. Okay. Okay. And this was information only, so yes. no vote required. So we'll move on to G2. Item G2, resolution regarding the North Carolina League of Municipalities 2014 Advocacy Goals Conference. And this item is actually for action uh, because the Advocacy Goals Conference is scheduled for December 11th in Raleigh. And as we did last year, um, council will basically appoint one of the um, council members attending the conference as the voting delegate. So I have a resolution that does that. I've left the name blank because um, we really wasn't sure who all would be attending. And so that's kind of for discussion along with the package of um, goals that will be discussed and voted upon at that December 11th meeting. Uh, it's, it's pretty thick and I'm sure Councilmember Bessie uh, probably has a comment or two about a few of them. Uh, so I'll, I'll Shall we just sort of work through um, from the beginning and, and you, if you would comment on in some cases why you've starred some of them as important to Winston-Salem as opposed to some of the others? Um, the ones I starred, I, I knew immediately that we had some <coughs> issues either current or in the past that that might be helpful um, for us to have legislation in that particular topic area. Um, there may be some on there that are not starred that other council members or other staff members may find um, beneficial, but it was just based upon my prior knowledge okay. of the okay. area. And can you tell me, um, maybe Renee can answer this, how many of us are going? I sent you an email. Oh, okay. I, trained, I felt guilty, so I changed my mind. <laughs> and we have not heard from council member. Yeah, okay. All right. Very good. Okay, do you want to start, start through some of these? <laughs> well, I mean, I can if you think that might be beneficial or do you have particular questions about them? Because the list is kind of long. It's just yeah. up to you. Um, let's and then see. some of these, we may end up getting more information actually at the uh, meeting on the 11th. Okay. Um, 
Okay, obviously the first one with uh, about uh, transportation needs. Dan, do you have any comment to make? Um, not in particular on that one. Um, it's, I think it's consistent with positions we've taken previously. Um, let's see. And oh. I was going to say, most of these, I think, for the most part, are consistent with positions we've taken. And some of these, I don't know that we have had any particular uh, position one way or the other. Um, well, I'll just uh, sort of skim through. Uh, wasn't there something, I'm looking at number three, um, uh, incentives? Um, wasn't there something about uh, that in today's paper? Uh, I haven't had a chance to read the paper, but I know yesterday there was some talk about the General Assembly reconvening early mm -hmm. to, to come back and address yeah. some incentives. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, that was a state-level fund that um, the governor it's already burned through. Yeah, it wants more. It wants more. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, vandalism and and that sort of thing. Um, uh, one I'm uh, that piqued my interest, of course, is number five, which is legislation to um, uh, try to take back some power from muni municipalities. Do you think it's even likely that they're going to give up? Power? I doubt it. I, I, I didn't start that one because the likelihood of that going anywhere is probably slim to none, mm -hmm. considering the um, strategy in the last couple of years has been to take more from us than give us more. Mm -hmm. So I, I doubt it. And on that note, um, note to myself, is there any way to force the General Assembly to put an issue to vote, to popular vote? I'm not aware of such. I mean, I could look at it and say, are you aware of anything that would? To my knowledge, not in North Carolina. Hmm. Um, uh, initiative is what they call it in other states, and it's in other state constitutions. Not all other states. Some states have it, some don't. Um, but there, there's nothing here. All right, thank you. All right. To chime in, if there are any particular ones that um, that you want to ask questions about. I know Dan has some comments about one of the federal things in the back. But, um, I will point out that I think most of our goals that were submitted did make the list. Um, number 21 was one of ours on page 26, support legislation that provides municipalities with additional tools and incentives to encourage developers to undertake economic development projects in economically distressed or blighted areas of the city. And then we also had the uh, restoration of the film mm -hmm. and historic tax credits as our goals. So I, we actually had a good impact on the list. Okay. And tree protection. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, and so my, my questions are, I probably should sit down with you sometime because it's probably going to take an hour or so. Okay. I mean, the whole water water and sewer rights thing, I, I just don't feel like I'm, I mean, it seems like it's a very dense That's subject. That's Angela, that, Greg, and Ron Hargrove. Okay. Well, <laughs> and, and actually those are the ones that I, I got totally confused over. There are a number of them. You so. want to talk about some of those? Certainly. Which one? Starting at number 12. There's been a push to try to force municipalities to use their water and sewer services to provide service outside of municipalities. And a lot of these that are related to uh, service beyond the municipal boundaries are about that. There are also uh, issues in here about being municipalities being forced to provide service all the way to the front door of the house as opposed to the meter location. So and many it's an attempt to pull that back from legislative actions that have been taken in recent years. In many instances, um, <coughs> with the city bearing that cost. Of course. Um, 
and so right now, the way the legislation exists, the city has more control over that process, or is it is it state controlled now? Straight state uh, law say that we provide service up to X point, and they just want to change that. They've already changed it in some cases, and this is an attempt to roll back the changes that have been made, and to prevent future expansion of the changes that have been made. Okay. I guess that brings up the question about the the, the case in Asheville, mm -hmm. and that has been reversed. I, I understand. Or it was deemed to be court a level. Court, right. court level, right? But so, as far as the legislature is concerned, they haven't changed anything. Right. So, is some of this language addressing that type of a? It is. Okay. It is. And that's the example of trying to prevent that sort of thing from expanding beyond what they did in Africa. Right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's just passed it a, a minute ago. It's, there's a specific one about that. Uh, number 11 on page 22. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Opposed legislation that weakens or removes local control over public assets. Then I have yes. one. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Please. I had one in here that um, it's 24. Starts at the bottom of page 27. It's the current protest petition. And, you know, reading the background, I um, see the rationale. Mm -hmm. um, you see what? I see the rationale. Uh -huh. I mean, they're 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 proposing to do that as an alternative to repeal. Um, Which they tried to do twice in the past two years, I believe. Yeah. I believe. In that I'm not sure I agree with the strategy. I didn't star that for that particular reason because <laughs> um, I'm kind of torn. I, I think that, that certainly that's a reasonable compromise to suggest, but I don't think I would go in asking for legislation because Hopefully they then you, don't forget you, know, it. you don't have anything to offer as a compromise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because right now we have 20%, right, of property owners have to sign on for a protest petition. And it requires the super majority. Mm -hmm. what, what, are, what is the thought that uh, the percentage change? To increase the percentage as an alternative to their eliminating it altogether, I think is what the league is proposing. Or decrease the percentage, right? Well, let's see. Increase. Oh, no, increase. Yeah, increase, yeah. increase, increase the percentage. Yeah, okay. that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So it requires more folks, yeah. basically, to be yeah. able to file a protest petition. I sort of agree with uh, you and Dan that that's not something I'd want to get into. <laughs> but um, tell me about the land banks thing. It's 25. I'm not as familiar with this, and it's, I think it's somewhat of a new concept. But based upon what's here, it seems like it's an effort to, to address vacant, foreclosed, and abandoned property. Um, and they're talking about setting up a public authority, mm -hmm. I guess a way of uh, addressing the property that in many instances, because it's abandoned or foreclosed, it becomes like a nuisance. Um, and apparently it's a, it's a way to create an entity, I guess, that holds the property and you, and eventually the property is revitalized. Apparently it's not something, obviously not here, but it's been used in other areas and it's in a successful way of revitalizing areas, apparently. Mm -hmm. I'm not really familiar with it beyond what's here. Yeah, and I'm not really up on the hard details of it too, but I know that they're used in many other states mm -hmm. uh, as tools to redevelop. It, it allows you to hold a piece of property and mm -hmm. not just take it straight from foreclosure to, you know, mm -hmm. to, uh, to a sale. Mm -hmm. But I'll be happy to try to find some more information. Okay, and, and would this uh, weigh into our decisions on demolition? Would it perhaps help us turn properties over to not-for-profits? 
it could. It yeah. could, depending upon how it's structured. Okay. And I guess maybe uh, at the meeting on the 11th, maybe there'll be more information in terms of how these things are structured so mm -hmm. that maybe we'll have a better understanding as to whether or not the property that's slated for demolition could be put into this, I guess, pool, so to speak. Mm -hmm. but it's not quite. That one certainly does, but, I mean, interest me. So I'm, Do you know who the point person is at the league on that issue? No, but I can certainly find out between now and Monday. Thank you. Um, local option tax. It's Any questions there? Yeah. 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 Is 28 the one you're talking about? Well, I, I was just skimming down, but yes, yeah. 28. Basically, is an option to replace the privilege. Privilege license tax, the um, software tax, and like with something else, oh, whole harmless, a number of uh, different sources of revenue that we've lost over the past two to three years. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where that's Okay, the um, on, on page 33, item 32, mm -hmm. seek legislation to increase clean water management trust fund appropriation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Restore the funds recurring appropriation. I, I'd, I'd like to see us support that as well. Okay. That's um, the kind of thing that we have accessed before. Yeah. Uh, okay. And uh, I believe the. Uh, Ellen Creek restoration mm -hmm. project was an example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are other places in the city we could use that if, if it were restored to a, a size that was meaningful. Mm -hmm. Was it, um, has it totally been? No, it's, it, I think it was cut down. It, it had been, it had reached a, a level of $100 million a year recurring appropriation and, and was, um, cut to $10 million and moved into the non-recurring category. So oh, okay. It's been skeletonized. Yes. Uh, severely. Got it. Mm-hmm. Um, and 33 is the uh, historic tax credit in the film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. number, 30, <clears throat> number 34, mm -hmm. um, has that gained enough momentum where we're worried about it actually occurring? Um, Converting the... Uh, I know there's been talk about it. I'm not sure how much momentum, but apparently enough that a number of um, members uh, thought it was worth submitting as a goal. So I'm not sure how much you know momentum it's gained. Yeah, I know there is in other states, but uh, right. I, I haven't heard publicly any real discussion on that. So yeah. We're just trying to be ahead of that issue. I, I think so. I think the league and the membership's trying to stay on top of it. Number 37, we have no tea for actually collecting taxes that are owed us. Is that what I'm understanding from this? And we have to ask the legislature to give us. It's a county function. It's a, it's, I think proposals. there's uh, seeking additional authority. I mean, because you can foreclose on property to collect taxes. I think it's additional authority that the counties in particular are asking. Mm -hmm. um, Does the city foreclose on tax liens? We have an interlocal agreement with the county, so we asked the county to do that for us, and the county has contracted with the firm to handle all of those for us. But they don't let us do spot foreclosures? No, we've, we've basically um, transferred all of that over to the county. I suppose if there's one that the city was interested in, um, putting on the fast track, we certainly could talk to the county and the firm that they've hired to do those. But we pretty much just let defer to the county on that. Collection of both city and county taxes. Okay. Is there one in particular we need to discuss offline? No, no. Okay. I'm sure there will be, but not right this minute. Okay. Uh, okay, let's see, where are we? Here's some more water things. Um, Where are you? 
Greg, do you have any insight into all of these, starting on page 37? The first one is about making sure that the rules relate to science. The second one. <laughs> We actually had a bill a couple of years ago on that uh, particular issue and um, got sideways because we had some folks express some concern about it, which really wasn't the purpose of the bill, but anyway. But that's why I started that one in uh -huh. particular, because again, I wanted to use science and, and correct information in that process. Um. I'd say all three of them on that page are related to the desire to make sure that the city is paying for improvements to water quality, is paying for improvements that will actually create improvements in water quality. Because there are expenditures that can be made that wouldn't actually result in overall stream and river water quality. And so that's, I think, what mm. a number of these are about. Okay. Then the federal goals, or did you have a yeah, question I, I had, here? I had one, uh, and number three on the regulatory goals, uh, 37. <coughs> Some of the background language I'm a little concerned about. <coughs> um, the reference to the fundamental differences in stream characteristics between urban and rural streams and seeks the ability to have different regulatory standards applied to these two types of streams. They could go to some dangerous places. Do you want some more information about that? Yeah, I, I'm not comfortable checking okay. off on something that says we we categorically support applying different standards to um, this two types of stream. Mm -hmm. You have already a, a, in the federal Clean Water Act concept of protection of existing uses. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that recognizes that not all all streams, and typically you know, heavily impacted urban streams would be among them, don't have like you know, swimming type uses. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the, the the current principles are intended to prevent even the impacted urban streams from essentially being treated as waste channels. Um, and there is, I think, a risk that this could go in that direction. Mm, okay. I'd back off on, on that or heavily caveat. Okay. I'll, I'll see if I can get some more information before Monday. Yeah. I, I didn't see any mention in here the, the um, scenario of municipalities being able to create their own fiber networks. And that the, there's a case down as a Wilson. So it's a broadband yeah, item it's earlier understand. in the package. It, it's in here. I just, I didn't start. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't know to what extent we were really um, heavily interested in it. It should be number 13, I believe. Okay, that's right. Look on page 22. Is that? Okay. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. So okay. it's in the list. Okay. And, and certainly, you know, your voting delegate can support it. And uh, it just, uh, don't mind starring it. It's just when I was first read through it, I just didn't. I do think there's a competitive advantage opportunity for you that. Maybe. Um, I know the legislation was revised, I guess, was a couple years ago, to kind of limit our authority because they didn't want us necessarily competing with that industry. So uh, I know there's some smaller communities that do, and I don't know if, if it's because the lack of competition or lack of response from that industry, but I know a couple of years ago there was a tweak to that legislation. And it just, I guess, the whole idea of competition. So it wasn't one of those that I kind of saw. So. Yeah, the city of Wilson has its own municipal yeah. broadband system and, and <clears throat> they created it um, in response to the, you know, the private company's failure mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. uh, provide for 
their area and it, um, there was a pushback from the industry that basically said we don't want competition right. from the cities. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, if, if there was competition at all, <laughs> then it would be easier to to justify a limit. To me, if the, the industry is doing its job, then it right. 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 they're not the right job, we should be able to compete. Right. Yeah, they're not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are, on, are we through with uh, this section? And right now, what I have is that you all need more information on 25 and on page 28 and number three on page 37 before Monday, is that correct? Please. Okay. And then you were going to provide me with a, a contact for whoever's lead at, uh, on the uh, land bank. Yeah. That, that's what I mean by information. Right. Land bank is number 25. Okay, right? great. Thanks. Is that right, number yep. 25? Yeah. Okay. Federal goals, Dan, you had yeah. some concerns. Yeah, number one, I, I'm proposing that we actively oppose that one, not simply not treat it as a priority. Um, uh, it's, it's the one that says, oppose federal regulatory changes that expand the jurisdictional reach of the Clean Water Act, and then it refers to the EPA and Army Corps of Engineers rule uh, clarifying which waters are subject to the Clean Water Act. Um, uh, I, reports to you that um, that is both dangerous and factually inaccurate description. Um, the rulemaking reference uh, does not expand the uh, jurisdiction of the Clean Water Act. It clarifies the definition of waters of the United States in response to two Supreme Court cases that muddled the um, uh, the interpretation and application of the rule language that was previously in effect um, in you know, 2001-2006. And with the, you know, the lightning speed of, of, of federal rulemaking, you know, they're just now reaching the point of, of a final proposed rulemaking. On it. There, there's been interim guidance in, in, in effect. Um, uh, th this is a, a very technical area, both scientifically and legally, very controversial. Um, you have interest groups you know, you know, duking it out on, from all perspectives on that. Um, uh, the, the objective description of what the EPA has proposed uh, is a clarification. Uh, it's not an expansion. It does not add new categories of wetlands or waters that would be covered. Uh, it does not dramatically uh, change uh, the interpretation that's in effect, but it makes it clearer and explicitly references um, you know, case by case data. Um, uh, the, the, the misrepresentation in this description is driven by um, a particular element of a particular industry, some elements of the developed community want to continue to shrink the jurisdiction uh, and therefore they are resisting the clarification which the EPA and Corps has laid out because it does not further shrink the definition. Uh, <coughs> uh, and uh, if you want to dig into it, I, I yeah, the details the, I've, I've, I've circulated I in some uh, some sites, but um, I would ask that we that we specifically oppose including this, uh, and that if it passes, which it could, you know, as a league priority, that we clarify to our representatives that we do not support it um, because it is dangerous to clean water, the uh, the wetlands and streams that would be lost altogether to Clean Water Act protection for the first time in decades, I might add, lost to that protection um, by continuing to pursue the, the shrinkage of Clean Water Act jurisdiction are among those that are most critical to protecting water quality. Um, and it would, 
be, I think, disastrous uh, for clean water in North Carolina and around the country if that effort succeeds. I, I think it's in the case of, of some people are, quite frankly, simply so greedy they don't care, and others are of being um, misled by misrepresentations uh, of, of what's going on. Because it is a tricky, tricky area, and yet I've, I've studied it for decades. Yeah. So. Uh, in fact, then, I mean, given what you've told us, <clears throat> I'm surprised that it's on the advocacy goals list. Well, it, it's, uh, there, um, uh, seems like it's almost less of a municipal issue than a, yeah. a city's issue than it is. It is. Outside you know, what, the, what's being being represented here to cities um, is that it affects us because it affects projects than we have to take. Well, as, a, as, a, as a practical matter, we're more likely to be affected by the flood map jurisdictions, which is entirely separate from that, and won't, would not be affected by this. What this affects um, is new development, greenfields development, particularly. Um, and while continuing to, to shrink the jurisdiction or extent of the Clean Water Act in terms of wetlands and streams that it protects um, would make it easier to, in, in some cases, to simply do the, you know, the clear-cut, pave it over approach. I don't think that's healthy uh, for our city or other communities on any level. It's, it's not good. Um, uh, development in, in terms of the, what it brings to the community and what it loses to the community in terms of you know, water and, and wildlife resources uh, can be dramatic. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why you have urban streams at such a you know, likely to be more degraded level. Uh, than, than Any questions about any of, let's see, what is this? I, I guess um, I, I would I would move that we recommend that the salem oppose that particular stated goal for, for those reasons. Okay. Mark, is there a second? Second. No. All in favor? Aye. 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 So uh, we will uh, then recommend against number one on the federal goals. Okay. And then we need a motion on the balance. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, one other There's question. A of um, could be done. What is this, what is uh, the liability thing? We are, we're uh, it's, it's on the very last 42. page, on to page 42. Those are just the um, principles that the league uses. There's yeah. Six of them, I believe. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Authority, revenue, mandates, open government, and ethical conduct, liability, growth, and regulation. Basically, what they're saying is that um, oppose any efforts to impose greater liability upon municipalities to erode the defense of governmental immunity and things that we can use to avoid liability. So, I mean, these are, like Greg said, general principles. Mm -hmm. So. And I think it's just a overall statement of, of, of a position that they want to put forward in the General Assembly. I don't think there's anything in particular they're pointing to in terms of legislation that would do that, but just say that we don't want to expand or support anything that would impose greater liability for the new okay. All right. I see. All right. Very well. Well, we've uh, voted on uh, opposing number one under federal goals. Uh, may I have a motion on the remainder? Can we do a couple of things? Because sure. I need actually from you all, if you have a recommendation for the voting delegate, if you don't, I guess it's fine. We'll take the full council, let the full council decide. But if you all have a recommendation, that would be good to include in the resolution. Okay. And then I guess in terms of the other um, goals, if you are supportive of those, that would be good if you can recommend supporting those. If there's some that you want to support and others you don't, for those you want to remove from the category and, and voice, I guess, 
an indication that you don't support those, and I need to know that. Does that make sense? Yeah, got it. Yeah. And now, obviously, someone somewhere <laughs> sitting in our chair in another city or whatever had an interest in, in these other things that may not seem to be um, a very great interest or as, as interesting to us. So, um, and that's correct, because all the municipalities were invited to submit goals, and then there was a meeting to um, whittle down those goals to a manageable size, mm -hmm. and so that's what you have here, mm -hmm. so yes. Yeah, and so, uh, I mean, I'm under the impression that the ones that have been mentioned, and you have the starred items, and, and uh, uh, the one or two extra that we, we've pointed out mm -hmm. would be actively supported. Mm -hmm. The others just sort of neutral, and then the one federal piece um, actively opposed. Mm -hmm. So, and as far, tell me again who's going to the meeting. The three of us and, and, and Derwin. Uh, Derwin. Well, has anybody been actively campaigning for the role? <laughs> I would think Dan. Yard sign. I, I pitched for it last year because I wanted to argue on the, the green waste thing. Um, uh, I'd, I'd be happy to, to do it again, but I don't want to you know, push it out any of my colleagues who no, want, no. want to no, I enjoy would the think, experience. Yeah. <laughs> but certainly by seniority and by the fact that you're much more conversant with most, uh, most of these issues, I would think that you ought to be the spokesperson. I'll I'll make that uh, I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> All right. And and uh, let's see if we can say uh, in a motion form what we're going to recommend. So we move, we move to actively support the starred items and to actively oppose the number one, number one on, the on the federal goals and otherwise not to take a position on, on the balance. I mean, you take a position. I, I just, again, support, but not actively support. Yeah. I guess it depends upon kind of what's happening at the, at the meeting and so forth. I think you could support. Approve of the others. Is there a support. second to that motion? And then uh, I'll ask the question. Okay. Um, how many, I mean, is there some sort of uh, protocol about of these 40 or 50 pieces? How many will? I think they're trying to whittle them down again to 25. Yeah, okay, I see that, yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's where the stars come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That, 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 you know, they, they, what they did last time was they took a um, took weeding down votes and ended up with the number that they were projecting to yeah. try to get. Um, and I expect they'll do something similar again. The people will discuss them and they'll they'll pitch to pick one or the other. It depends on which gets the most votes. So it's our job as delegates to to make the star ones. I mean, it's up to you all. Again, 25. I just looked at the list and thought, well, you know, based upon um, past history, these are important to the city. Okay. And since you had to work through that process of getting down to 25, I thought it might be beneficial. So, I mean, you can take that as a guide. Um, that's what council wants to do. So. And we'll be, uh, we'll caucus as we, as we work through it. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I mean, that's what the last time. So, okay, all in favor of the motion to um, advocate for the start items? Aye. 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 Okay. And oppose the federal. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Are there any other questions or do we stand adjourned? That's all I have. Okay.